Hello, students. Uh, uh, welcome to yet another session uh, on meiosis, and let's get started. Here in this image, you can see how a parent cell is forming four gametes. See, in case of mitosis, one parent cell gave rise to two daughter cells. Here in this case, one parent cell gives rise to four cells. And another difference is, uh, in case of mitosis, the number of chromosomes remained the same. Whereas in case of meiosis, they get halved. That is, uh, diploid cells give rise to four or one, uh, say, diploid cell gives rise to four haploid cells. So that is the difference between mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis occurs in the somatic cells of the body, whereas meiosis happens in the reproductive cells, which uh, leads to the formation of the formation of sperms and eggs. Introduction. Meiosis is a special type of cell division of germ cells in sexually reproducing organisms, which is used to produce gametes like sperms and eggs. It involves two rounds of division that ultimately results in four cells with only one copy of each chromosome. That is the haploid condition and therefore is known as reductional division. In case of mitosis, it was equational division, whereas in case of meiosis, it is the reductional division. Additionally, prior to the division, genetic material from the paternal and maternal copies of each chromosome is crossed over, creating new combinations of code on each chromosome. Later on, during fertilization, the haploid cells produced by meiosis from a male and female will fuse to create a cell with two copies of each chromosome, again, which is nothing but the zygote. Meiosis was discovered and described for the first time in the eggs of sea urchin in 1876 by a German biologist named Oskar Hertwig. It was described again in 1883 at the level of chromosomes by a Belgian zoologist no, no, called Edward Van uh, Benetton in Ascaris roundworm eggs. The significance of uh, meiosis for reproduction and inheritance, however, was, was described only in 1890 by German biologist August Wiesmann, who no noted that two cell divisions were necessary to transform one diploid cell into four haploid cells if the number of uh, chromosomes had to be maintained. In 1911, the American geneticist uh, Thomas Hunt Morgan, he detected the crossovers in the meiosis uh, in the fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster, which helped to establish that the genetic traits are transmitted onto the chromosomes. Now, the term meiosis was derived from Greek word meiosis, which means lessening. So it was introduced to biology by uh, scientist J.B. Farmer and uh, Moore in 1905 using the idiosyncratic rendering meiosis. The spelling was then changed to meiosis by Cornick and uh, by Pantel and Decinetti to follow the usual conventions of transliterating the Greek language. Uh, here is the overall summary of the meiosis. Here you can see how the parent cell with uh, diploid uh, condition ends up forming four haploid cells. Here you can see interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, uh, which is very similar to that of mitosis. Again, it repeats, that is, see, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase repeats. But the main difference is during the prophase one of meiosis, it undergoes several steps where the crossing over happens. So that is the difference in case of meiosis. So the division happens twice to form four cells. So in meiosis, the DNA replication is followed by two rounds of cell division to produce four daughter cells, each with half the number of chromosomes as that of the original parent cell. So the two mitotic, sorry, the two meiotic divisions are known as meiosis one and meiosis two. Before the meiosis begins, during the S phase, that is the synthetic phase of the cell cycle, the DNA of each chromosome is replicated so that it contains uh, two identical sister chromatids which remain held together through sister chromatid cohesion, that is binding together. This S phase can be referred to as pre-meiotic S phase or meiotic S phase. Immediately following the DNA replication, the meiotic cells enter a prolonged gap 2 like stage known as the meiotic prophase. 
during this time, the homologous chromosomes pair with each other. They undergo genetic recombination, a programmed process in which DNA may be cut and then repaired, which allows them to exchange some of their genetic information. A subset of recombination event results in crossing over, which creates physical links between the chiasma, which is the X-like formation between the chromosomes, between the homologous chromosomes. Uh, in most organisms, these links can help direct each pair of homologous chromosome to segregate away from each other during the meiosis one, resulting in two haploid cells that have half the number of chromosomes as that of the parent cell. During meiosis two, the cohesion between the sister chromatids is released and they segregate from one another as during mitosis. In some cases, all four of the meiotic products form gametes, such as sperms, spores, or even pollen. In female animals, three of the four meiotic products are typically eliminated by extrusion into polar bodies, and only one cell develops to produce an ovum. Because the number of chromosomes is halved during meiosis, gametes can fuse to form a diploid zygote that contains two copies of each chromosome, one from each parent. Thus, alternating cycles of meiosis and fertilization enable sexual reproduction with successive generations maintaining the same number of chromosomes. For example, a diploid human cell contains 23 pairs of chromosomes, including one pair of sex chromosome, which is half of maternal origin and half of paternal origin. So, meiosis produces haploid gametes, could be egg or sperm that contain only one set of 23 chromosomes. So when two gametes fuse, the resulting zygote is once again deployed with the mother and father contributing 23 chromosomes. So this same pattern, but not the same number of chromosomes occurs in all the organisms that utilizes meiosis. Meiosis occurs in sexually reproducing single cell and multicellular organisms, including animals, plants, and fungi. So it's an essential process for oogenesis and uh, spermatogenesis. Although the process of meiosis uh, is related to the more general cell division process of my mitosis, it differs in two impo uh, important respects with respect to recombination in meiosis, where the genes get shuffled between the two chromosomes in each pair, producing recombinant chromosomes with unique genetic combinations in every gamete. So meiosis produces four genetically unique cells, each with half number of chromosomes as in the parent. Whereas in mitosis, it produces two genetically identical cells, each with the same number of chromosomes as in the parent. Some eukaryotes like uh, deloid uh, rotifers, they do not have the ability to carry out my uh, meiosis and they have acquired the ability to reproduce by parthenogenesis. So meiosis does not occur in uh, bacteria or archaea bacteria, which generally reproduces asexually by binary fission. However, a sexual process known as horizontal gene transfer involves the transfer of DNA from one bacteria or one archaea bacteria to other and recombination of these DNA molecules of different uh, parental origin. Now, moving on to the phases of meiosis, meiosis is divided into meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, which are further divided into karyokinesis 1 and cytokinesis 1 and karyokinesis 2 and cytokinesis 2, respectively. The preparatory steps that lead up to the meiosis are identical in pattern and uh, named to interface of the mitotic cell cycle. Interface is divided into three phases, growth 1 phase, synthesis phase and growth 2 phase or the gap 2 phase. In this very active phase, the cell synthesizes its vast array of proteins, including the enzymes uh, and structural proteins, it will now, which it requires for growth. In G1, each of the chromosomes consists of single linear molecule of DNA. Whereas synthesis phase, the genetic material gets replicated. Each of the cell's chromosome duplicates to become two identical sister chromatids attached at a centromere. This replication does not change the ploidy of the cell since the centromere number remains the same. The identical sister chromatids have not yet condensed into the densely packed chromosomes visible with light microscope. This will take place during prophase 1 in meiosis. G2 phase. In G2 phase, uh, as seen before, mitosis is not present and uh, meiotic prophase corresponds most closely to the G2 phase of the mitotic cell cycle.
Next, interface is followed by meiosis 1 and then meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 separates a replicated homologous chromosomes, each made up of two sister chromatids, into two daughter cells, thus reducing the chromosome number by half. During meiosis, sister chromatids decouple and the resultant daughter chromosomes are segregated into four daughter cells. For diploid organisms, the daughter cells resulting from meiosis are haploid in number and contain only one copy of chromosome. In some species, cell enter a resting phase known as interkinesis between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 and 2 are each divided into prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, similar in purpose to their analogous subphases in the mitotic cell cycle. Therefore, meiosis includes the stages of meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, that is prophase, metaphase, anaphase 1 and 2 respectively. Here is another uh, quick glance of the meiosis. This is a meiosis 1 where the parent cell divides into 2 and in the meiosis 2 again they undergo the same prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase resulting in 4 daughter nuclei or 4 gametes. So in this metaphase 1 especially in the prophase the crossing over happens that is in the chiasma region the crossing over happens and it leads to recombination. That is the reason why we are all different from each other. We are all different from each other. Although we are 99.99% same, the 1% variation is basically because of this recombination that is happening uh, because of meiosis. So here, the ploidy from 2N results or gives rise to a haploid number of gametes, four haploid number of gametes. So that these gametes, when they fuse, again, they maintain the diploid condition and it goes on. During meiosis, the specific genes are uh, more highly transcribed. In addition to strong meiotic stage specific expression of mRNA, there are also pervasive, pervasive translational controls, selective usage of uh, preformed mRNA, regulating the ultimate meiotic uh, stage specific protein expression of genes during meiosis. Thus, both transcriptional and translational controls determine the broad restructuring of the meiotic cells needed to carry out meiosis. Meiosis 1. Meiosis 1 segregates the homologous uh, chromosomes, which are joined as tetrads, producing two haploid cells, that is N chromosomes, which is 23 in case of human beings, which each contain chromatid pairs. So here you can see 2N is 4, say for example. So this is prophase 1. So what happens? Uh, uh, after prophase, the metaphase happens. So they're pulled apart and uh, uh, in the anaphase, they're pulled apart and in the telophase, they're forming two cells. But you can see that clearly the crossing over has taken place. So the initial um, uh, chromosome, and if you can compare this chromosome at this stage, you can see that there's a lot of variation. And then further, it undergoes uh, cytokinesis and gets divided in two cells. So the ploidy is halved here. Now moving on to prophase 1. Prophase 1 uh, is by far the longest phase of uh, meiosis, which lasts for about 13 to 14 days in mice. During prophase 1, the homologous maternal and paternal chromosomes, they pair the synapse and they exchange the genetic information, forming at least one crossover per chromosome. These crossovers become visible as chiasmata. Uh, this process facilitates the stable pairing between the homologous chromosomes and hence enables accurate segregation of the chromosomes at the first meiotic division itself. The paired and the replicated chromosomes are called bivalents or they are even called as tetrads because it contains four chromatids with one chromosome coming from each parent. And the prophase 1 is divided into a series of substages which are named according to the appearance of the chromosome. So what are they? Leptotin, zygote parkitin, diplotin, and diakinesis. So in the prophase, the beginning of prophase is the leptotin, where it begins and the chromosome starts to condense. And in the zygotin, the synapses begin. So the synaptonemal complex is being formed. And in parkitin, the crossing over happens. So DNA gets exchanged with the non-sister chromatids. And in case of diplotin, the synapses ends, so the chiasma visible within the bivalent. And in diakinesis, the prophase ends and the nuclear membrane disintegrates and is, uh, gets itself prepared to move to the next phase, that is the metaphase. So let us go about uh, each of these substages in brief.
uh, first is, is the leptopene. So this is the first stage of uh, prophase one, and it is also known as leptonema. So in uh, Greek, leptonema means thin threads. You can see they're like threads. So in this stage of prophase one, the individual chromosomes, each consisting of uh, two replicated sister chromatids, they become individualized to form visible strands within the nucleus. The chromosomes each form a linear area of loops mediated by cohesion and the lateral elements of the synaptonemal complex and assemble, forming an axial element from which the loops emanate. Recombination is initiated in this stage by the enzyme SPO11, which creates programmed double strand breaks around 300 per meiosis in mice. This process generates single stranded DNA filaments coated by RAD51 and DMC1, which invade the homologous chromosomes, forming interaxis bridges and resulting in the pairing or co alignment of homologous to a distance of 400 nanometer in width. Next, next substage is zygotine. So, leptotin is followed by zygotin stage and it is also known as zygonema. So, zygonema in Greek means paired threads. So, in which, uh, which in some organisms is also known as the bouquet stage because of the way telomeres cluster at the end of the nucleus. So, here you can see uh, they are paired or uh, two are present and it resembles that of a handle of a bouquet and then it emanates. Uh, in this stage, the homologous chromosomes become much more closely and stably paired uh, because of the process called synapsis mediated by the installation of the transfers and central elements of the synaptonemal complex. So synapsis is thought to occur in a zipper-like fashion starting from a recombination nodule. So the paired chromosomes are called bivalents or tetrads. Next substage is pachytin. Pachytin uh, is also known as pachynema, which means to say in Greek, thick threads. So in this stage, uh, all autosomal chromosomes have synapsed. So in this stage, homologous recombination, including chromosomal crossover, is completed through the repair of the double strand breaks formed in the leptotin. Most breaks are repa uh, repaired without forming crossovers, resulting in gene conversion. However, a subset of breaks forms crossovers between non-sister chromosomes, resulting in the exchange of genetic information. So the sex chromosomes, however, are not wholly identical and only exchange information over a small region of homology called the pseudo-autosomal region. So the exchange of information between the homologous uh, chromatids result in a recombination of information and each chromosome has the complete set of information it had before and there are no gaps formed as a result of this process. So because the chromosomes cannot be distinguished in the synaptonemal complex, the actual act of crossing over is not perceivable through an ordinary light microscope and the chiasma is not visible until the next stage. Next substage is diplotene. During the diplotene stage, which is also known as diplonema, which means two threads in Greek, the synaptonemal complex disassembles and homologous chromosome separate from one another a little. So, however, the homologous chromosomes of each bivalent remain tightly bound at the chiasmatic region, the region where crossing over occurred. The chiasmata remain on the chromosome until they are severed at the uh, transition to anaphase 1 to allow the homologous chromosomes to move to opposite poles of the cell. Uh, here you can see that they are almost separate except for the region where the chiasma uh, is seen or the crossing over is seen. So, in human uh, fetal eugenesis, all developing oocytes develop to this stage and arrested in the prophase 1 before birth. So, this suspended state is referred to as the dictyotene stage or dictate. Uh, it lasts until meiosis is resumed to prepare the oocyte for ovulation, which happens at puberty or even it can happen a little later. The last substage of uh, prophase 1 is diakinesis. So, the chromosomes, they condense further during diakinesis stage. So, uh, diakinesis in Greek means moving through. So, this is the first point in meiosis where the four parts of the tetrads are actually visible. So, the sites of crossing over entangled together, effectively overlapping, making the chiasma clearly visible. Other than this observation, the rest of the stage closely resembles prometaphase of mitosis. The nucleoli disappears, the nuclear membrane disintegrates into vesicles, and the meiotic spindle begins to form. 
Next is the meiotic spindle formation. So unlike mitotic cells, human and mouse oocytes do not have centrosomes to produce the meiotic spindle. So in mice, approximately 80 microtubule organizing centers form a sphere in the ooplasm and begin to nucleate microtubules that reach out towards chromosomes attaching to the chromosomes at the kinetochore region. Over time, the uh, microtubule organizing centers, they merge until two poles have formed, generating a barrel-shaped spindle. In human oocytes, spindle microtubule nucleation begins on the chromosomes, forming an aster that eventually expands to surround the chromosomes. Chromosomes then slide along the microtubules towards the equator of the spindle, at which point the chromosome kinetochores form end on attachments to the microtubules. The next stage is metaphase 1 after prophase 1. So here, homologous pairs move together along the metaphase plate as the kinetochore microtubules form from both spindle poles attached to their respective kinetochores. The paired homologous chromosomes, they align along an equatorial plane that bisects the uh, spindle due to continuous counterbalancing forces exerted on the bivalence by the microtubules emanating from the two kinetochores of the homologous chromosomes. This attachment is referred to as bipolar attachment. The physical basis of the independent assortment of chromosomes uh, is the random orientation of each bivalent along the metaphase plate with respect to the orientation of other bivalents along the same equatorial plane. The protein complex cohesin holds sister chromatids together from the time of their replication until anaphase. In mitosis, the force of kinetochore microtubules pulling in opposite direction creates tension. The cell senses this tension and does not progress with anaphase until all the chromosomes are properly oriented. In, in meiosis, establishing Tension ordinarily requires at least one crossover per chromosome pair in addition to cohesin between sister chromatids. So here you can see the phases of meiosis 1. So the prophase 1 here, initially the uh, cell was deployed and the homologous chromosome, they got paired up and exchanged fragments. That is what is referred to as crossing over. So once this homologous pairs crossed over, they form a line near the metaphase plate and they start being pulled to the opposite end. That is what is witnessed in anaphase and telophase. So in case of anaphase, the homologous uh, Homologs, they separate to the opposite ends of the cell, uh, but still the sister chromatids, they stay together. In telophase, the newly formed cells are uh, haploid and each chromosome has two sister chromatids. Now moving on to the next stage, that is anaphase 1. The kinetochore microtubules, they shorten. They pull the homologous chromosomes with uh, each consist of a pair of sister chromatids to the opposite poles. So in the, uh, the non-kinetochore microtubules, they lengthen and they push the centrosome farther apart. So the cell elongates in preparation for division down the center. Unlike in mitosis, only the cohesin from the chromosome arms is degraded, while the cohesin surrounding the centromere remains protected by a protein named shugoshin. So in Japanese, shugoshin means guardian spirit because this prevents sister chromatids from separating. So this allows the sister chromatids to remain together while the homologs have been separated. So here you can see anaphase 1, where the uh, chromosomes are pulled apart, but still the sister chromatids remain together and the homologous chromosome gets separated. Next stage is the telophase 1. The first meiotic division effectively ends when the chromosome arrive at the poles. Each daughter cell now has half the number of chromosomes, but each chromosome consists of a pair of chromatids. The microtubules that make up the spindle network disappear and a new nuclear membrane surrounds each haploid cell. The chromosomes, they uncoil back into the chromatin and cytokinesis. Uh, happens where the pinching off of the pinching of the cell membrane in animal cells uh, happens and in case of plant cells it's the formation of the cell wall plate uh, therefore it leads to the formation of two daughter cells however cyano cytokinesis does not fully complete uh, resulting in the cytoplasmic bridges which enable the cytoplasm to be shared between the daughter cells until the end of meiosis 2 so the sister chromatids remain attached even during the telophase 1 so here you can see 
uh, the telophase one here the sister chromatids are still attached to the attached to each other during telophase so after this the cells may enter a period of rest what is known as interkinesis or interphase 2 so here there won't be any dna replication that is seen or happening now let's move on to meiosis 2 so again meiosis 2 consists of four phases prophase 2 metaphase 2 anaphase 2 and telophase 2 so to quickly summarize uh, in prophase 2 uh, the starting cells are haploid cells uh, uh, as a result of meiosis 1 and the chromosomes they condense. In metaphase 2, again, they line up at the metaphase plate and in anaphase 2, the sister chromatids now separate to the opposite ends of the cell. Here you can see the sister chromatids are still together but in anaphase 2, the sister chromatids are now being pulled apart and post which is the telophase 2, so newly formed gametes are haploid in nature. So each chromosome has just one chromatid so meiosis 2 is the second meiotic division and usually involves equational segregation or separation of the sister chromatids. Mechanically, the process is similar to mitosis, though its genetic results are fundamentally different. The end result is production of four haploid cells uh, from the hap two haploid cells, which uh, produced in meiosis 1. So the four main steps of meiosis 2 are prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase 2. First is prophase 2. In prophase 2, we see the disappearance of the nucleoli and the nuclear envelope again, as well as shortening and thickening of the chromatids. So here the centrosomes, they move to the polar regions and arrange spindle fibers for the second meiotic division. So in prophase 2, you can see how they get shortened, thickened and uh, the nuclear envelope gets disintegrated. Next is metaphase 2. In metaphase 2, the centromeres contain two kinetophores that attach to spindle fibers from the centrosomes at opposite poles. The new equatorial metaphase plate is rotated by 90 degrees when compared to meiosis 1 perpendicular to the previous plate. Next is anaphase 2. So this is for after uh, metaphase 2 is anaphase 2. So the remaining centromeric cohesion which is not protected by Shugoshin is cleaved allowing the sister chromatids to segregate. So the sister chromatids by convention are now called sister chromosomes as they move towards the opposing poles. Now is the telophase 2. The process ends with telophase 2, which is very similar to telophase 1. And it is marked by decondensation and lengthening of the chromosomes and the disassembly of the spindles. So here again, the nuclear envelope forms again. And a cleavage or cell plate formation happens, producing a total of four daughter cells, each with haploid set of chromosomes. So now the meiosis is complete, ends up with uh, the formation of four new daughter cells. So this is the last phase of meiosis. However, cell division is never complete with another round of, without another round of cytokinesis. So very clearly in the telophase, you can see how uh, uh, the daughter cells are formed. And uh, post cytokinesis is the formation of four gamete cells. So once cytokinesis is complete, there are four uh, granddaughter cells, each with half of set of uh, chromosome that is haploid. Uh, in case of males, uh, all these four cells are sperm cells. Whereas in case of females, one of the cell is what is referred to as egg cells, while the other three form the polar bodies. So they are basically uh, egg-like cells only, but they are very small and they do not develop into egg. Now what is the significance of meiosis? Meiosis is responsible for the formation of gametes, which is responsible for uh, sexual reproduction. It activates the genetic information for the development of sex cells and it deactivates the sporophytic information. It maintains the constant number of chromosomes by halving the same, that is, it makes it into half. So this is important because the chromosome numbers double after fertilization. So in this process, independent assortment of maternal and paternal chromosomes takes place. Thus, the chromosomes and the traits controlled by them are reshuffled. The genetic mutation occurs due to irregularities in cell division by meiosis and the mutations that are beneficial are carried on by natural selection. So the crossing over produces a new combination of traits and variation. To quickly summarize, meiosis is a special type of uh, cell division uh, 
of the germ cells in sexually reproducing organism to produce gametes. It involves two rounds of division, ultimately resulting in four cells with only one copy of chromosome and therefore it is called as reductional division. Myces 1 and 2 are divided into prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase stages, similar in purpose to their analogous subphases in the mitotic cell cycle. Therefore, meiosis includes the stages of meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, which has further substages like prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase 1, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase 2. So, meiosis 2 is the second meiotic division and usually involves equ equational segregation or separation of sister chromatids. The end result is production of four haploid cells from the two haploid cells produced in meiosis 1. Thank you.